what I want to tell to my future self is you did it, future self. You got through all of this. So you gotta breathe. Here we are. Okay, you guys, here's where we're at. First off, good morning. Welcome to today's video. Okay, I wanted to sit down and do this video for myself, but also for you guys. I am taking a comical approach to my reaction to the reality of a transplant evaluation. Yeah. Here's how it went. I received a packet in the mail. This packet is quite large and it details everything that is going to happen for the transplant evaluation. And because we're coming from out of state to do this evaluation, it's all crammed into five days of morning to evening testing in the hospital. I'm actually gonna be outpatient, yeah. but we will be at the hospital, like he said, every day, all day. So, so you're probably watching this video after Mary has gone through these five full and intense days, not only physically, but emotionally and mentally of her body processing a lot and her mind and her heart processing a lot. And right. so, uh, before we go through that, we're filming this uh, pretty much a week ahead of time. And over the last few weeks, Mary's had all kinds of reactions to the reality of a transplant evaluation. And here are some of those reactions. And I will also say, I kind of knew a little bit. So my sister had a double lung transplant over eight years ago. So, and it's at a different hospital than I'm gonna be at, and um, she was evaluated and then transplanted for a double lung transplant. I'm being evaluated for a double lung transplant and a liver transplant, so my testing looks a little bit different than hers. Also, in the span of eight years, things have changed, so I knew somewhat of what was to come, but not everything. So when I looked at the list of everything, Here's kind of how it went. Wrapped up in this beautiful gold binder, embellished with, hey Mary, this is, this is so beautiful. Isn't this gonna be fun? Let's put a, an adorable fabric sticker here to make you feel like it's a happy thing. We open it up and it is the first four pages are the schedule. So I'm just going to read to myself the schedule and allow it to sink in. <sighs> Starts at 7.45 on Monday morning when I arrive at the hospital and I truly do not know how I'm, one, gonna sleep the night before, and two, how am I gonna get there at 7.45 in the morning? It's a good question, we'll figure it out. Like. I don't know. Yeah, the, the amount of work it takes for Mary's body in the morning to get it going and mm. I guess if you don't sleep the night before it might be a little easier on your lungs. I mean truly do we just bring a pop-up tent mm -hmm. and sleep in the hallway of the hospital? Would that be easier? 9 a.m. labs, urine screen, 10 a.m. PFT and arterial blood gas draw. This is something that if you're in the CF world, you've heard about. And if you're in the transplant world, you've done it. I've heard, I've heard that this is the ultimate of pain, like so painful. They stick a needle in your, this part of your wrist into your artery. So whenever I get blood drawn, I do it up here. That's just my preference. But flip the wrist over and apparently it hurts like crazy. I thought of something. If they let me, I want you to film my face when they're doing that. And I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna talk about it. So I'm gonna be like, okay, that just feels like I'm being stabbed. Okay, 
this isn't as bad. Actually, it's worse. Okay, this hurts. Whatever, like talk through it. So we gotta keep that in mind. Maybe I'll do like a ABG reaction video. But truly, I'm nervous about that. But physical pain is just momentary. I will, it will go away, right? He's here to be my moral support. He's like, he lets me cry when I need to cry. But he's also like, we're gonna do this, we can do this. Um, so I was like, babe, when I'm reacting to these things, you can just be like, we're gonna do this. Even if I'm like, duh. Okay, then some normal stuff, x-ray, meet with a pulmonologist. Then there's two scans that day, a VQ scan, which I called, and it's called a perfusion scan. It's something about breathing. I'm not too nervous about that one. It's just like a CAT scan, which is my next thing. 4 p.m., a CAT scan. This is the other thing. I had a CAT scan like a couple of years ago, and they placed a uh, peripheral IV, and apparently, which I've never passed out before, I passed out as they were placing the IV. Yeah, that was not not good. And he was like, you were shaking like, uh, uh, like yeah, crazy. Like, yeah. It was so I am kind of nervous about that because I don't think I've had an IV, a peripheral IV since, because I have a port, so I don't need peripheral IVs. Oh wait, I had one during the surgery. But anyway, I'm just like every, I think it's every other day, I'm gonna be getting a peripheral IV for whatever reason, the scans or the MRI or whatever. And so I'm real curious how that's gonna go down. I'm real hoping I don't pass out again because it really scared him. I was out, oh. I was taking a magical nap while I was passed out, so it didn't bother me. Well, I had never seen her pass out before. Or have and, convulsions. And yeah, and so it was just surprised. Like, Mary would be like the last person I would expect to pass out. So I wasn't quite sure what was happening because I didn't think she would she would just pass out from an IV, but she did. Right. It was a vasovagal reaction, something yeah. out of my control. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Tuesday morning. Ha! Ah! This is probably the thing, one of the most nerve-wracking things for me. So two and a half years ago, I had two nasal jejunal feeding tubes placed. It did not go great. They, the placement was not good, not good at all. And I have two nasal testing things. One is called manometry, one is called pH test. I don't know. The manometry one they put in and it only stays in for like 10, 20, 30 minutes, something like that. Then they take it out and put a second one in, and that stays in for 24 hours. I'm nervous about this, guys. Like, legit, I am nervous. Because I was puking the whole time. They were putting the nasal, the feeding tube in. It, like, scratched my esophagus, which it was painful for quite a long time. Anyway, I'm not... I, I think what I want to tell to my future self is you did it future self you got through all of this but it was a process to be ready for all of that and it's going to be a process to get through it but you can do it you can and you will because you have to but I am nervous so there's that then you meet with abdominal surgery uh, surgeon you get an echocardiogram and an EKG meet with a hepatologist liver education class that should be educational okay wednesday morning they take the ph probe the nasal thing out then you meet with the liver transplant coordinator then you meet with a dietitian social worker then you go to a rehab pt so a physical therapist i have no idea how long that is because it just says be there at 1 30 and so that'll be interesting they're testing to make sure i can that I'm physically able to withstand a transplant surgery. Then, uh, another cringy thing. So, MRI of abdomen. Sounds innocent enough, right? Here's the thing. I have some ferocious claustrophobia in the last couple of years. Maybe three, four years. Since my breathing has declined, and my just like I yeah. I have dreams at night that I'm trapped 
or I, I had a dream last night that I, that I have to like, say I have to go to the bathroom or something in my dream and the bathroom is so small and I'm like, I can't do it. Yeah, I think the more that Mary's lungs feel like they're suffocating, spaces feel suffocating. Yeah. And so that's, um, yeah. So, we're, we're, we're gonna get through the MRI, honey. We're going to, yeah. I'm gonna be in there with her. I'm gonna hold her hand. Hopefully. Well, I don't think my hand will be out. Okay, I'll hold your foot. Hopefully they can do it so that your head's out of the machine. I thought I was gonna be fine. You are gonna be fine. I thought I was gonna you be fine. You are gonna be fine. <laughs> I thought I'd be fine the last you time. You are gonna be fine. <laughs> but I ended up really... You made it through last I time. I did, but it was hard. Okay. Thursday morning, meet with the financial coordinator, then have a barium swallow test. I am advised from a, a fellow medical person, veteran. bring, what? A veteran of barium tests? Yes. She said, bring chocolate syrup with you. So note to self, we need to buy some chocolate syrup and mix the chocolate syrup in. Okay, then we have meet with the surgeon, cardiothoracic surgeon, meet with a psychologist, and then have a cardiac consult. The cardiac consult leads to, drum roll, the big one, a heart cath, cardiac cath, which is where they go in through like, I think it's called like your femoral artery maybe. They go in through like your hip socket basically down there and thread a probably huge needle up there and then go into your heart and make sure your heart is okay. That's obviously not a simple thing. I mean, it is for those who do it every day. They're like, oh yeah, heart cath, I do it every day. No, no big deal, like for the surgeons. But for the patient, you're like, you're gonna do what? You're gonna put that where? And mm. you are gonna get some sleepy drugs here. I, <laughs> the hope is that, my hope is that I'm gonna have a great sleepy drug time yeah. and I'm not even gonna care that they're doing their stuff but I mean the last week has been a lot of like okay so how do I need to prepare for this um okay they're gonna do what ah what medications are they gonna use like to sedate me will they work will I be completely conscious will I not what what's going to happen like what's going to happen of course it's the the fear of the unknown my sister is awesome and she was like I had all the same questions here's how it went for me and she was just like pretty much validating all of the questions and my freak out basically <gasps> Oh, I, I think I have to say that this look at the schedule is after, you know, two to three weeks of Mary processing through and this was kind of just a humorous walk through or not so much humorous, but just matter of fact, uh, walk through the schedule of what, hey, when you, when this video goes live, you did it. We did it. All right. But I think, you know, like, uh, yeah, this was kind of just for myself to remember what my initial reactions were. Um, it's, it's really cute of me that I thought that organizing the papers and getting cute stickers and cute binder would help make it more palatable, the reality of the week that's about to happen. But in reality, there have been days where I sit here and I like zone out because I start thinking, I'm meeting with a cardiothoracic surgeon to talk about him cutting my chest open and like the realities of this. And I sit there and I space out and I think about that and it's so overwhelming. But then I have other days where it's like, okay, I'm gonna do this. This is no big, not, well, that's a big deal, but. I've got it in my binder and we're gonna get through this kind of right. thing. Yeah. So it really has been, like Peter said, a process over the last couple of weeks. And I'm going to keep processing. Yeah. And, and 
I think it's uh, fair to say that, you know, when, when this video goes up, there, there's probably still like a ton of questions. If you missed uh, our video from several days ago, we'll link it down below and we'll have plenty of videos coming up where you guys, <laughs> you guys can get caught up to speed on this past week. Yeah, so thanks for tuning in and coming on this crazy unknown journey with us. And as, as always, always, we, we will see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow. Good, good night. night. Don't you think we... Cozy. Hey, Ollie, come here. Oops. You wanna say good night? Say good night. Good night, buddy. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>